uh hi everyone good evening we are into our ninth day of core java session today so we already have completed eight classes eight classes of intensive java hands-on programming sessions okay so we are into our ninth day and as every day let's discuss about the agenda of whatever we are uh dealing or what we would be dealing in today's class yesterday well i was taking my previous class i told you that today's class will be a continuation to whatever we have learned yesterday so what was our yesterday's topic yesterday's topic is something related to multiple classes okay so i can say that today ninth class we will be dealing about sorry we will be dealing about multiple classes but this is a part two part two okay so this is a continuation to whatever we have learned in our previous session okay so today's class will be a completely hands-on session i would be asking you to guess the output or you should be with me while i write the code and while i compile and while i run so that you know we both go in the same sequence okay so let's let me quickly revise let me quickly revise with a small program of whatever we have learned yesterday okay let me quickly revise with a small program of whatever we have learned yesterday and then let's start taking the class notes and let's uh, start taking what are we going to deal in depth in today's class so yesterday if you remember i have created a new folder called multiple classes in my desktop mercy folder i want to delete everything okay i have selected all by using control a and I'm pressing delete key on my keyboard. Okay, I have deleted everything. So let me quickly go and create a new class. So what do I call my class as? It is class, maybe I'll say Mercy class one. Okay, Mercy class one. And as you know, uh, let me increase. Yeah, as you know, let me select the language as Java. Okay, I'm opening my curly brace and I'm closing my curly brace. Okay, so this is my this is my class. I want to quickly write a main method public static void main. Okay, so it is expecting a string arguments of string array of arguments. I'm opening my curly brace and I'm closing my curly brace. That's it. So just for my understanding purpose, what do I generally do? I'll write a system dot out dot print and statement, but yeah, let's 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 not even do that. We have just written a main method. So since we are into multiple classes, right? What I'm doing is I'm copying this class and I'm just having an enter on line number six and I'm pasting it once more. So now I want to name it with a different class. So what do I do? I'll just say Mercy class two. Okay. I did not do anything, guys. I have two classes, Mercy class one and Mercy class two. Yesterday in one of our rules, what we saw is we can have multiple classes interfaces enums etc in the class file okay there are various other things where if you do not understand what is an abstract class if you do not understand an annotation as i told you i'd be teaching everything in depth as we go further as we go further in our classes now let's quickly save this one mercy class one and by the way this is just a uh, just whatever we have learned yesterday so i'm saving control list which is save and i am into this folder called multiple classes i'm pasting it over here and say saving with dot java extension so what do we do next we need to compile this right so i i am opening the command prompt let me maximize this i'm giving the maximum uh font size i'm increasing the font size so that people can understand so what is the class name uh, what is the command to compile it is java c mercy class one dot java Okay, so when I compile this, as you know, we will Increase have the two classes. A little bit more. Should be fine. Perfect. Okay. So as you know, since we have two classes, now we have two classes over here, Mercy class one and Mercy class two. Why did two classes come over here? Because we have two classes defined in our Java file. Okay. Now I want to do something. I want to do something. Yesterday in one of our programs, we did that from one class we can call 
we can access the static members of a different class. We can access the static members of a different class. What are static members? There are two static members. One is the method and the other is variable. All these things yesterday I have actually shared in the notes as well. So what I want to do is I want to call one class static member using a different class. What I'm doing, I have Mercy class two, right? So I'm just saying I want to call the main method of Mercy class two. I want to call the main method of Mercy class two from Mercy class one. OK. Can I do this? Yes, I can do this. And just for my confirmation, just for my confirmation, what I want to do is I want to add a few system dot out dot println statement system dot out dot println. What I say, what I say, I will say mercy class one. What I will say, mercy class one main method start. Just decrease main method start. Okay. So what I want to do, I will say mercy class one main method end. Okay. I'll just say end. Okay. So this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And one more simple thing that I want to do is I copy my both the system dot 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 print and statements. I want to do the same thing in my next class as well. I want to do the same thing in my next class as well. So here it is mercy class two main method and this is mercy class two main method. This is a very simple program guys. OK, you can call it as consider this to be some a revision that you call that you got from yesterday's uh, class. So since you are already aware how the class loads or what kind of things happen, etc, etc. If you uh, I think you already have the pen and paper with you. You can quickly write the output of this particular program so that when we run. You can actually cross it that with your output. If you feel that there is some compilation error, you can write it. If you feel that there is some other problem, you can write it. If you feel that there is no problem in this program at all, then just write. I mean, I do not say exactly you have to write all this in your note just for your confirmation for you to cross check. OK. I think you should have been written this already. Let me quickly run this. Compile this first. Java C. What is my class name, by the way? My class name is Mercy class one. I just copy this. And I say copy this dot Java. So I don't have any problem. I want to run this. So you can see this. This is my output. This is my output. I think everyone should be guessing this properly if you had practiced. If you had practiced or if you are with me in my previous classes, all this, 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 this output should have been guessed in the exact possible uh, or in this exact uh, lines. So why did the flow come in this way? For the people who are thinking this is a repetition, no guys, we are going to see one more point now. OK, why did it come like this? Main class, main method, my mercy class on main method is called. Yes, this line is printed. So after this, instead of JVM calling this main method, mercy class to main method, I am calling this. I am calling the main method. OK, I am calling the main method. That is why the control has come from this point to my mercy class two, And now it has started and ended. And then the control came back to my mercy class one and this line got printed. OK, so this is how the control flow is happening. And this program we have already discussed in our previous classes. Now I just want to add. I just want to add just one more thing. Just one more thing. I am calling mercy class two dot main from mercy class one. Let me do something like this. I want to call mercy class one. Mercy class one dot main method from mercy class two. So here what I'm doing from my first class, I'm calling the main method of my second class. And from my second class, I'm calling the main method of my first class. I'm not doing anything else. This is so simple. Now, since you already have the book and pen with you, you can just quickly guess the output of this program as well. You can quickly guess the output of this program as well. We have just added this particular line, which is on line number 15, which is on line number. 15. OK, so let me quickly compile and compile and see what happens. Let me quickly compile and see what happens. OK, so what I did, I just cleared my screen. I say Java C. What is my class name? 
I have copied my my class one. I'm just copying this and I pasted it to Java. Do I have any compilation problem? Yes, there is no compilation problem whatsoever. Now let me quickly run this one. Java Mercy class one. Let me quickly say enter. So guys, you can see there's something happening. There's so much of output. Let me stop this. To stop this, I should say control C. I should say control C. That is not stopping. It took a lot of time for me to even come to this point. Okay, so you can see this, guys. There is so much of output. There is so much of output. If I just extrude, if I just go, 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 go till here. Let me copy this. Let me copy this until the end and see what is what is my output. Let me copy this until the end. Copy, and I want to paste it somewhere over here. I want to paste it. Maybe I'll just take a new thing. I want to paste it. You can see somewhere around 3000 lines have been with the same 3000, 3000, or 4000 lines have been with the same output. Class two main is calling the class one main, and class one main is calling the class two main. So all these things, all these things are happening, 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 and we are able to see the same error. Okay. We are able to see the same error. So what is happening at this particular point, guys? What I want to tell you, what I want to tell you is this is something called as recursion, one method calling the other, but without an exit condition. We did not have any exit condition for this one. We did not have any exit condition for this one. So that is why one class is calling the other, one class is calling the other. And then because of all this, we are having this particular problem. Okay, we are having this particular problem where one class is calling the other class and the other class is calling the first class. This is a problem. Now the same thing, let's try to see in a different way. The same thing, let's try to see in the different way. I do not want anything. Let me clear all this. Okay, I want to go, my, go to my Mercy class one. I just want to delete my Mercy class two. I'm just deleting this. I do not see anything over here. What I did is I'll remove all this. I'll remove all this. I know that when I run my Mercy class one, JVM calls my main method. I just want to play around. That. What I want to do is I want to call my main method also. I also want to call my main method by passing null as an argument. So here JVM is calling my main method. And what am I doing here? I'm again calling my main method. JVM is calling my main method. I am again calling the same main method. Let's try to see what happens in this case. I don't have any any system dot 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 print and statements. I do not have anything whatsoever. Let me quickly compile. When I do this, I say Java C and here I go. I'm just copying this my class one. I copy this and I want to compile this thing, dot Java. When I do this, I do not have any compilation problem. Let's let me quickly run this Java and then my class. Name. When I do this, you can see this. Let me again say control C so that we are not having any problem. You can see this guys. What is the exception saying? It is saying exception in thread main stack overflow error. Where is that on line number five? Where is that on line number five? So on line number five, you are trying to call me, call me, call me multiple times, multiple times, and I don't have any exit condition for the same. So that is why I am getting this stack overflow error. OK, that is why I am getting this stack overflow error. And this is very important, guys. This is not a multiple class problem, but this is a problem that is there even in a single class. So when you are calling methods, you should make sure that you do it in a proper way. OK, you do it. You do it in a proper way. Let me take the notes. Let me take the notes. I just want to write it saying that method. Just give me a second. I should make sure that method calls should avoid stack or i can say unconditional recursion or i can say you should not call the same method without any condition guys what is this condition what are my conditions or what is an exit condition everything i'll be speaking with you in the further classes but only thing is you should make sure that you are not ending up in calling something like this so let me say control z and i want to bring back to my original program that i have already done so 
this program was having a stack overflow because I'm calling one method, one, one main method from a different class. OK, so that is why what I will do is I will just remove this for my experimentation. I want to remove this one and then. And then proceed further in my execution for today. So this class we have already executed this class we have already executed and we have seen the output as well. I asked you to guess the output and you have already been able to guess the output as well. Now I just want to play around a little bit, a little bit from this class as well. If you remember, we have spoken about, we have spoken about something called, something called static initialization block. Okay, something called static initialization block, right? So let me just quickly, quickly add one static block over there. static. I have added one static block, open a curly brace and then close a curly brace. I want to add some system dot auto print and statement. I'm just copying this statement. Copy. And I just say that static. Block in Mercy class one. Static block in Mercy class one. OK, I just added this one. I just added one more static block and I did not do anything else. I just added one more static block and I did not do anything else. OK, so let me quickly run this program or. Since you already have a book and uh, you know, uh, book and pen. You can guess the output as well. What I did, I just added a static block. OK, in my main method, I have mercy class one. And here I am calling. I'm having all the system dot or dot print in statement. I want to guess. I want you to guess the output if I run the mercy class one. OK, if I run the mercy class one, let me quickly compile this so that we will see it together at once. OK, so I'll say Java C. What is my class name? It is mercy class one. I just say copy. Just say copy. Just say dot Java. When I do this, I don't have any compilation problem whatsoever. Let me quickly run this. Let me quickly run this one. And what is my output? Here you can see the first statement that I got printed. I'll copy this one and put it in my notepad plus plus only. So what is my first statement? Static block in Mercy class one. Static block in Mercy class one. Why did this get printed, guys? Why did this get printed? This is because the static block will get loaded even before the main method. We had a few rules that we have already discussed in our previous classes. We had a few rules that we had already discussed in our previous classes. So uh, following those rules, my this statement is getting printed. My this statement is getting printed. OK, so just for a quick revision for you and all the others, this this uh, uh, this out statements this we have already seen, you know, uh, in the previous program itself. So I just want to I just want to give you a quick uh, quick quick uh, overview, like uh, so that in our next program it will be very easy for us to uh, understand whatever we have learned. Okay, this is a software called Draw.io. It is a free one you can download from uh, internet. Okay, this is just for an illustration purpose uh, for you. What is happening inside, guys? Okay, so what I want to do is I want to just uh, I want to just add a particular uh, you know diagram over here. I want to say this is something called a stack. This is a stack memory. This we have already seen in our initial classes. This is something called stack memory. OK, so what we have in this program, we have Mercy class one and we have Mercy class two. There are two classes, correct? There are two classes. There are two classes. Let me quickly go to my, uh, I can say something like this. Wait a second. Yeah, I have something called Mercy class one. Mercy. Class one, OK, I have this class that is loaded and I'm just copying and I'm saying there is one more class. There is one more class which is mercy class two. OK, when or before before I even call this one, I want to do it programmatically. What happens internally when I run this particular Java file? I see that there is a class called mercy class one in mercy class one in mercy class one. The moment I try to run, the first thing that happens is this loads into memory. OK, 
that is what we have seen we have mercy class one and it is loaded into memory so what is next what is next my static method or my uh, i can say not static method my static block will get executed okay my static block will get executed so let me quickly write it down over here i can say s i b okay s i b this is already present in my mercy class one that is why this got executed okay that is why this got executed that's that's fine now let's go back to the program when i go back to the program here it says and after i have run my static block my main method will get invoked by jvm okay my main method will get invoked by jvm when my main method gets invoked by jvm it is invoked by jvm the first statement that got that gets printed is line number nine that is why we are able to see that and then what i'm doing is instead of jvm calling this mercy class 2 i myself i'm calling this mercy class 2 so at this point what will happen since this is a this is a first call to my mercy class 2 even this call even this class will get loaded okay even this class will get loaded so what is this? I'm just copying this and I'm just pasting it once more. So I have one more class. There's nothing over here. I do not have anything. So this is something called Mercy class 2. Okay. This is something called Mercy class 2. And when Mercy class 2 is loaded, we will check if there is any, any uh, static block in Mercy class 2. There is no there is no static block in Mercy class 2. So the main method gets called because I'm calling the main method. And then it gets printed, the two statements get printed, and that's it, nothing else. Okay, nothing else happens. So, this is what happened in this particular program. In this particular program, this is how it has been loaded. Now, I want to just add one more statement. I want to just add one more statement to my existing program. What is that? I will just copy this static block and I want to paste it in my, my class 2. Okay in my my class two okay so guys i have just added this extra static block extra static block now you can guess the output okay maybe to your previous outputs you can either strike it off or add or whatever okay so now we have mercy class one let's say i compile this java file and if i run my mercy class one you can guess the output of whatever we are getting okay we can cross check as well let me run this one what i do java c this is my mercy class one. This is my mercy class one. Copy. Copy mercy class one. And I say dot java. Do I have any problem? There is no problem. So now I am running this mercy class one. So I have a output. Let's quickly go through the output. What is the output? Static block of mercy class one. Yes. That is what happened. The first thing that happened was loading of Mercy class one and then static block is there. So it got executed. Now JVM is calling my main method. Now instead of JVM calling Mercy class two, I am only calling the main method, uh, you know, Mercy class two main method. So here, this time when Mercy class two is loaded, it sees that there is a static block, right? It sees that there is a static block because of that, what happens? The static block content would be printed. The static block content would be printed. So that is why after the mercy class and means method start, we have static block in mercy class two is getting printed. So this diagram changes just a little bit. What is that little bit? Now we have introduced SIB in, in our mercy class two as well. We have introduced SIB in our mercy class two as well. And then since the since since the static block got executed. And then our control comes back and then like so, uh, this is this is at the time of Mercy class two's loading. And after that, we are calling the main method. So these two statements will get printed. These two statements will get printed. And after that, the call back call goes back. And finally, we print this Mercy class one main method. End. Guys, this is very important because you have learned till now about the static initialization blocks in a single class, but we are dealing the same in multiple classes. So I just want to add a little bit more complexity to the same program. Little bit more 
to the same program. What is that? What is that? I want to add one more static block. I want to add one more static block. I want to add one more static block. Let's see if I can do it or not. And the rule says that both the any number of static blocks should be added at the start of the program, at the start of the class. But Java is not restricting that to me. I just want to experiment. Okay. I just want to experiment. I want to add a static block over here. Okay. So static block in static block, I can say static block one. And this is static block two. Okay. This is static block two. What I did in this program, guys, I have just added one more static block in Mercy class one. Now, again, you can quickly guess the output of this particular program also. The only thing that I added is a static block towards the end of my program, which is the Mercy class one. Let me quickly run this and show you the output. Java C, what is my class name? It is Mercy class one. I say copy and I'm pasting it, say dot Java. And I do this. I don't have any compilation problem. Okay, I can say Java and then Mercy class. Let's say I enter this. So here you can see this guys, static block in Mercy class one. Just give me a second. Did we compile this static block? Oh, I did not save this one. You can see this, there is a red color because of which it is an indication that I did not save the file. So I'm just saving this. The shortcut is control S, right? The shortcut is control S. So now I'm saving this. I have saved this file properly. Let me clear my, let me clear my console. I'll say Java C class name dot Java. I did this, there's no problem. Java class name. This is how I run my program. And when I say enter, here you can see static block one, static block two, and then the main method, then static block in Mercy class two, and then rest of the program. And then rest of the program. We have seen, we have seen the rule saying that we can have any number of static blocks in a particular class. And the static blocks will get executed from top to bottom. Right, static blocks will get executed from top to bottom. So here you can see we have two static blocks in this particular class. The one that I have highlighted and the other that I have highlighted. So we have two static blocks in this particular class. When I run this one, then both get loaded at the time of class loading. If we go to the diagram, okay. If we go to the diagram, I can say SID1 and I can say SID. OK, so I have SIB1 and I have SIB2. I do not have anything else. And my Mercy class 2 is still having a single SIB. OK, this is how this is how the class loading at this particular point happens and we can understand the output of this particular program. Now, what I want to do, what I want to do, I want to add, I want to add the same static block in my Mercy class Two as well. I want to add. I can say block one, and here I can say block two. Okay, in Mercy class two. Again, this is very simple. I just want to run this one and show you the output. This is no. I can say Java C. This is my class name. I did not do anything else, guys. I have added one more static block. But where it did I add now? I added it on the top portion of the class just next to my first static block in Mercy class 2. But in my Mercy class 1, I have added at the bottom. Java is allowing us and there's no problem. But what is the standard? The standard that I've written is in Mercy class 2. OK, so I want to run this one. Java C. This is my class name. This is my class name. Copy and paste it over here. It's it or Java. When I do this, I don't have any compilation problem. Now it is Java and Mercy class one. So you can see this. Let me quickly copy my program output to show you what has happened. And pasting it over here. Static block one and then static block two. OK, these two have got loaded. Static block one and static block two have been loaded. 
we can see that in our diagram static block one and static block two have been loaded and after that we are calling the main method the main method so just this is a statement that is just before calling the main method of mercy class two so we can see this mercy class one main method start and then the control came to mercy class two the loading did not happen so i'm loading it static block one in mercy class two and static block two in mercy class two okay let me quickly add it in my diagram as well so till now it is only sib1 and then now i have as sib sib2 okay now i have a new static initialization block as well so this is how the program is and then this is calling my mercy class to main method start main method end and finally my main method of my mercy class one is ending finally my main method of mercy class one is ending so let me quickly add this notes let me quickly add this notes okay what is that notes i can say i can say s i b okay more than then one SIB can be present in a class. And then one more point is execution. Execution of, of SIB happens from top to bottom. Okay, so this both points we have seen. Now we are coming to a very important point. Why I have come step by step, step by step to this point you know i'm coming to that point now guys okay so what i want to do is what i want to do is i want to i want to add i want to add or before that let me even copy the output of this particular program let me copy the output of this particular program okay and i want to save it over here i want to save this over here this is just for my reference okay now what i'm doing is i just want to add a little bit little bit more complexity okay so what is that what is that i want to add something like this i want to add something like this i want to add a few more extra lines i want to add a few more extra lines yes i have added few more extra lines i want to call this once more i want to call this once more my mercy class 2 i want to call this once more okay i want to call this once more now very simple thing guys what i did instead of uh like i just added a few loggers over here on line number 11 and then i'm calling my main method of mercy class 2 once more okay the only thing that i did is i'm calling it once more now i want you guys to guess the output of this particular guess the output of this particular program that we have already written maybe i'll give you and this is the output for your reference this is the output for your reference this is the output for your reference only extra line that i added is these two i'm calling the main method just once more i'm calling the main method just once more I think you should you should at least be able to write a shortcut of what might be the output of this particular program. Let me quickly write or try to run this to show you what is happening. It is Java C. This is my program. I say copy. I say copy. I say dot dot Java. So what has happened? There is no compilation problem whatsoever. There is no compilation problem whatsoever. Now I want to run this one. I want to run this one. So let's see what happens. And yes, I got the output. Let me quickly copy this. Let me quickly copy this and paste it in here just for my confirmation or just for my understanding. I want to again go here and say that what is the extra that I did? I did is I'm calling the main method of my Mercy class two two times here previously i was calling only one time now i'm calling it two times let's see the output so this line is common 
this line this line is common i can say i can say yes this line is common now let's go to the second line okay let's go to the second line yes this line is also common now the third line yes this line is also common now if i go to my fourth line if i see static block one in mercy class two this is fine and then static block two in mercy class two this is fine now the control has come to this point okay again the control has come to this but here the point that i wanted to highlight is you can see this particular one static block one in mercy class two static block two in mercy class two this is over and the main method start and end is over here but here it only started what i am then i am doing is i've just added this extra lines and i'm calling the main method once more but here what you have to understand is you do not see these lines once more you do not see the static block lines once more you do not see the static block lines once more i have called the main method two times but the static block lines are printed only once why is that guys why is that that is because of the rule that we have already spoken in our previous classes that is because the static blocks in a particular class will load only once irrespective of how many times you call them the static blocks of a particular class here there are two static blocks this both will get loaded only once even if you call 10 times right this will load only once even if you call 10 times i just want to prove it just once more okay let me call this four five times okay i'm calling it or i'll remove even this one i'll remove even this one how many times i'm calling one two three four five okay five times i'm calling the mercy class to main method but if you can see this two lines should get printed only once okay let me quickly cross check if i'm able to prove my point or not class sorry i can say java c space and if i can go mercy class one copy and here it is dot java can i do this yes my compilation is successful java and then this is my class name so let me just quickly copy my output i copied my output let me go over here and let's not even go over here so you can see mercy class to static block this is printed only once okay this is printed only once and mercy class to static block uh, mercy class to static block is again printed only once so any content related to the static block is printed only once this is the whole point that i want to you know emphasize in this particular program in this particular program okay so let me quickly go to my notes let me quickly go to my notes uh, and then add this very important point. What is that? Stat S I T R only once at the time of of class class loading class loading. So even if we call the same. Uh, you know method multiple times if it is in a static block it will not be getting executed this is the point that i wanted to even prove that if there are if there are db connections that are dealt uh, that are being dealt in our project then you wanted to make the connection only once you do not want to make it you know uh, 10 times you make a call to the website okay so in that time yes you can put that logic in your static block and it gets only executed at the time of class loading okay at the time of class loading so just a little bit just a little bit about whatever has been stressed till now okay i just want to give a quick revision i just want to quick give you a quick revision okay what we what we have spoken today it is the part two of multiple classes we have seen the static initialization block we have seen the static variables we have seen about the classes and we have seen the multiple classes yesterday. Now it is an extension of whatever we learned, okay, about the multiple classes. Now we can have, we can have the first important point is like we made sure that there shouldn't be unconditional recursion, okay. If 
you do if you do not have a condition of exit then there will be multiple calls being made and because of that you will get stack overflow error that we have already seen and how do we uh, avoid it in at least in our today's exercise we stopped calling uh, you know the main method from the second class and the main method from the first class this kind of recursion we avoided by stopping the call from a different class okay and in our point number two more than one static initialization block can be present in a class okay the same thing i have highlighted in the diagram as well there are two classes okay there are two classes and i have static initialization blocks two static initialization blocks in both the classes that is one thing that i have highlighted execution happens from top to bottom that also we have seen because the first sib statements are printed and then later on if you can see static block one gets printed static block two gets printed again the sequence follows the top to bottom sequence follows that is something that we have already proved and one more last important point is SIBs are executed only once and that too at the time of class loading that too at the time of class loading here let's say in my last program after the class has already been loaded into my stack even if I call the main method of this mercy class to 10 times that is fine the loading is already done so I will not let my SIBs to execute once more okay so with this guys my emphasis for today is uh, you know give you more clarity on how we work with the different classes multiple classes how is the connection between the static members in both the classes and what kind of things that we need to put in our mind you know uh, you know while dealing with multiple sibs in multiple classes so with this i think we can wind up today's session shashi you can consider stopping the recording. Just give me a second. Just a second, guys. Okay. Uh, so I think the meeting has been ended for today. Uh, so guys. Today, I have mainly stressed. I have mainly stressed on the multiple classes, their internal working, static initialization and blocks, and what are the costs that are happening here and there. So I'll be giving you the notes and uh, maybe the sample program, so that uh, the expectation from you is to learn. And actually, if you have a pen and paper, you can draw this kind of diagrams. What might happen? What is happening? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So this will help you. So our next topics. Our next topics will be a little bit more complex and will be more Java oriented. So we'll be speaking about class object. Till now we have spoken about uh, you know these things, right? So what is a class? Okay, what is a class? What is this public, static, void, main? So all these things I'd be speaking or would be stressing even more. And then what is a class? What is an object? How do we create an object? 
how do you call uh, print an object so they these these are related to object oriented programming principles so these things we would be seeing in our tomorrow's class so this will be a little bit a little bit changer of whatever we have been dealing till now uh, so it will be it will be a refresher and again i'm telling you to understand class object etc etc you need to understand the topics that uh, i have already dealt till now because in my further classes i will be having even even more uh what do you call it, complex programs and uh, for you to understand all those you need to first understand whatever i have taught till now so with this understanding guys please keep practicing and uh, keep updating us so that we will get motivation to teach you even more okay so with this guys let's stop the session for today on time and uh, see you happy independence day in advance we have a class tomorrow we do not have a holiday I'll see you tomorrow at 8.15. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.